Welcome, welcome. And get ready for our new features. We're going to be whipping through about a quarter of a million slides. New features are everywhere, and we'll be going through all these sections, like the File Explorer. You can now clone a Git repo in the File Explorer. And right now, there's this uh, little icon. We added a new little icon right over there. You click that. Uh, and, but soon, it's going to turn into a little hamburger icon. And you click the hamburger icon, and you can a clone, if you click the clone. And then you get this modal to come up to ask you for the address of the, modal, of the repo, and then it comes in as its own workspace. Uh, so you can bring lots of code into Remix really fast, or easily now. Um, and then when you click the workspace pull down, you get the Git icon on all the workspaces with a Git repository associated with them. And you can manage a Git repo in dgit. Of course, you could before, but maybe Actually, have any of you used dgit before? Oh, there's one. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's important, uh, yeah, you need to be able to push, pull, and do all your git commands. So you, you click the, it's a plugin, and uh, you load up the, the dgit plugin, it stands for decentralized git. Click, click that, and then over here, if behind the chair, or maybe on your screen, You'll see the init, push, pull, all the normal git commands. And oh, it's over there. And then um, you're good to go. And then we've got new templates. In the workspace, if you add, uh, click the new template, a new uh, workspace button, and then you get, oh, look, it's over there. You can get a create new um, workspace. I like it looking at this. Uh, and then um, what happens? Uh, you can choose a template. Oh, yeah, but first. You can initialize a repo, any repo you want, to become a Git repo. Uh, so now you click the default or that pull down menu, and you get uh, all the different uh, workspace templates. And now they're all the uh, Open Zeppelin templates, or some coin Open Zeppelin templates, and the uh, Zero X project. And if you click one of the Open Zeppelin templates, you get, you get uh, some of the um, features. So you, can, you click one of those, and you can add a new um, import to your uh, base uh, coin contract. And now you can drag and drop in the um, file explorer, which means that your workspaces won't be so messy, especially when you didn't open the right folder when you're creating a new file. Uh, and has everyone here used Remix D? It's an important little thing. Uh, yeah, and because it's important because Remix is not like a Google Doc. We get emails pretty often like, I lost my files in Remix when the browser crashed. So you just have to know where your files are saved. They're saved in, browser in the index.db, and that's in the browser, and the browser is feeble. You know? So if you want to save it to your hard drive, you can use Remixd to share a folder on your hard drive with uh, Remix, or you can uh, push it to you know, some other external Git repo if you want. Um, and now, as a result, we made the, the git, uh, the remix d uh, command a lot easier. Instead of a lot of flags, you just uh, go into the directory you want to share in your terminal and just type the remix d. Of course, you do have to download uh, it first, and it's an NPM package, so, uh, but it's simple. Uh, and now you can uh, load uh, Slither for all you static analyzers there out there. You just want to load Slither uh, locally. And we've made some editor updates. And for the master of editor updates, I give you uh, Philip. Thank you, Rob. Um, for those who, who have been here at the, uh, what, what do I? The green button, the big green button. For those who have been here at the previous session, you, you know how challenging it is to, to build a good code editor. And as we are using the same editor as, the VS, as VS Code does, we've been able to make it do some stuff that we expect the editor in VS Code to do. And the challenges that we had are basically the same that the nice people from Hard Hat uh, have when they are doing code parsing. So we've been trying to uh, solve this problem. First of all, in order to um, use these features, you have to turn them on. Because by default, we, we turn them off because you know some people might not like it, or it might be uh, all too sudden. <laughs> 
but basically what we have is autocomplete. And autocomplete is a very complicated beast, as we know, because when you're typing, you want stuff to happen. So we have designed some custom parsers. We use three in total to parse the code while you're typing. So what does it complete? It completes globals, the usual solidity stuff. It completes dot, uh, it does dot completions on globals from solidity. It also completes anything that you have inherited from other contracts and uh, anything that's available to the specific location uh, where you're typing. So that all of that also takes into account uh, uh, visibility of certain functions or variables that are being uh, imported through uh, the imports, basically. It also auto-completes uh, functions from other contracts so that when you type uh, proof, for example, it will pre-fill the variables for you in, a, in, a, in the editor. It's still very limited, but it's getting better as we go along. It's an experimental feature. It has some stuff to it, but we try to make it fault toler tolerant so that when you're typing and you're completely messing up, it tries to make sense of what, what's there. And I think we've done a pretty good job. Uh, it's for you to try out and to see if it actually is, uh, it is what I'm saying it is. Um, the dot completions are uh, a thing that I think is specifically useful for when you're doing complicated stuff uh, with contracts that you import. Here we have also a nice little feature that we built in order to complete uh, possible imports when you type import. Basically, we have some Uniswap and Open Zeppelin uh, preloaded so you can easily find and search files that you're looking for. If you're looking for some kind of interface for an ERC-1155, you just type in, you just go to the open Zeppelin slash and you type in 1155 and it will just show up in the list. It's easy to import it that way. You don't have to copy paste it anymore from uh, other locations. Uh, and the imports will be available, the imported classes, or the import contracts, sorry, will be available for you uh, as autocomplete objects when you uh, try to extend the contract and uh, anything else. So these uh, things are all being taken into the, editor, and into the editor. These are things that we believe are important features for people to develop quickly uh, and that any editor should actually have. Um, we also include gas estimates. Gas estimates are simply returned by the, by the compiler, right? And we just display them on the places where the compiler says that there is an estimate. Sometimes there is not an estimate. If you don't see the estimates, that means that the compiler hasn't been, can, can't make sense of what you're doing. And then, then some, suddenly things stop, right? So you see the gas here. If you hover over it, you see some more information because the gas is more complicated uh, beast as we go along. Then we have, just as in VS Code, we have jump to definition and references. We also have the peak function, so that when you click here, it will just open up this editor within the editor, and you can just jump around through all the references and definitions uh, that, you, that the thing can find. Um, we try here also to be fault tolerant. If your file is messed up and you have errors in it, it will still be able to find the, uh, the functions and the, the definitions. It will also show, you, also show you the NetSpec comments that are included into the files that you have imported. So um, let me see if I can actually see. Oh yeah, and then we have, we try to make something that when you actually type and you make an error, you see this, this squiggly line, so you get warnings and errors, and uh, what's the other thing? I forgot. <laughs> and it also colors the files, just like in VS Code, so when you have an error in a file, you will see it turn red. Also on top, you will see it turn red. If you've made a, an, a, an, an error in an imported file, which is important, you make an error, you just forget, a, forget something or something, it will actually put a squiggly line underneath the imported file, and uh, also it will also show you where the error is in the file explorer. So you can easily say, okay, this imported file has an error. I'll just go there and see what's going on. Uh, the hovers are another feature that we do. Uh, so it, this hover feature to shows you the errors that, you, that, the, that the compiler says that you've, that you've made. And as I said before, it just shows you the definition and the location of the, the stuff. And also the comments, if, if there are any, it will show them into the, into the, the hover. Um, then we have a nice play button, 
And this play button has several uh, things that it does. For Solidity files, it would just compile the files. And for TypeScript or JavaScript files, it will just run the script. That's the play button. It's a nifty new little feature that we made. And then we have code formatting. Code formatting is something that I use all the time because you know, I'm lazy and I'm not a Python guy, so yeah. I, I like to format a lot. So I, we did it and we will uh, build some customization to it so that you can actually customize the formatting to your own specifications or likings, but for now, it does some basic formatting on your JavaScript and on your TypeScript and on Solidity. So uh, try it out and see what it does and see if you like it. And if, it's, it's, if it becomes a big mess, just, just tell us and we'll fix it. Uh, here in the opening screen, when you close all the tabs in Remix, it will just show you this screen and it contains uh, the, uh, the shortcuts that you can use in the editor. So the important part to remember from this, from the editors, is to turn on all the features in the settings so that you can actually use them. If there is something that doesn't work, just tell us, because we need to learn from the experience from people who actually use Solidity a lot, and so that's important. Uh, the next part is proxy contracts, and I want to introduce you to David Disu, and he will talk about it. Thank you. Okay. Um, hi, I'm David, and I'll be talking about um, Remix IDE support for proxy contracts. Uh, Remix IDE allows you to be able to um, deploy upgrades to your smart contracts. We just introduced this, I think, um, a few months ago, about a month, two months ago, and it was purely inspired by um, continuity of your project. I believe we've all, at some point, deployed some contracts that we might feel like uh, making some changes to, and then um, we couldn't do that because uh, the, there was no um, provision for upgrades. So um, we have that, and um, we uh, the Remix IDE uses the open zip line ERC 1967 um, proxy contracts to help do this. Now, the open Zeppelin supports um, three types of um, proxy upgrades. I think um, the UUPS, the transparent, and also the beacon. Um, for us, for now, on the Remix IDE, we support you using UUPS um, pattern for um, um, contract upgrade. Um, yeah, okay, and then it requires you having the UUPS upgradable the cell in order for it to work. Uh, this feature can be easily be tested um, if you assess the open, uh, open Zeppelin wizard. You can be able to um, customize how you want your contract and then you select the UUPS upgradable and open a remix. If you have that, you compile, you should be able to have this. We also um, have templates I believe Rob was talking about uh, templates towards the beginning. You click Create Workspace, you can select uh, and customize what you want by checking also the proxy. So once you have um, your contracts um, in the IDE compiled, you should be able to have these options, deploy with proxy, upgrade with proxy. So basically, um, Remix IDE does um, in the background the deployment of the proxy contract. So we, we basically have a, a compiled bytecode of the ERC-1967 contract, which we deploy as your proxy, and then we now have your um, implementation contracts deployed on top. Um, so basically, when you are interacting with this feature, you'll be prompted with a model instructing you that um, two transactions will occur. And then um, using the JSVM, it's super fast. So you just see it immediately after the first deployment. <laughs> the, the first deployment, oh yeah. The first deployment and then the second, yeah. But then um, if you're using, um, say, Metamax and deploying to mainnet or one of the test nests, um, it will be a bit slower because one of the transactions has to complete. That's the, the proxy deployment first before the implementation. Oh yeah, so after deployment you have this um, interface displayed. Um, the first here 
is the deployment of the implementation contract, and then this is the proxy. Now, these two instances have the same UI, but then you get to interact with the proxy. You get to interact with this UI and not that. And um, this is because the whole point of having an upgradable um, contract is that you don't want to interact with your implementation. You want to interact with the proxy. But then we still display this so that you don't get confused and feel like uh, um, something is up. <laughs> but um, it's actually just there so that you interact with this and then this makes low level um, delegate calls to your actual implementation contract. Okay, and then we also have the upgrade. So now for the upgrade, you need to provide your proxy address. If you use Remix IDE to deploy your proxy originally, then you can check this box to be able to use the last address. Yeah, so really smooth. And um, moving on in the future, we plan on having um, a list of previously deployed proxy addresses <laughs> so that you can be able to pick from and not just the last deployed address. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I've talked about this. Uh, uh, it makes a, a delegate call, I guess, to your implementation contracts. Okay, also talking about workflows, um, Remix IDE also has um, a GitHub action that allows you to be able to um, run your Solidity test on your GitHub workflows. So it can be integrated as part of your build process, and um, you can be able to have it um, run um, the Solidity unit testing every single time there's a push, or depending on how you configure it to be. Um, we also plan to have um, the static analyzer also added as GitHub actions, so that you can be able to have it um, on your GitHub project. Um, we also uh, are currently working on having you run um, JavaScript tests uh, with Mocha and Chai, also um, as GitHub Actions. So, yeah. Okay, I'll, oh yeah, yeah, this is a sample, um, this is a sample workflow that can be used. Um, yeah, I guess it would be nice to check it out on the GitHub Marketplace. Uh, moving <laughs> forward, I'll be handing over to Rob to round things up. Right on here. Okay, a few more things to go over. Uh, we got a new workflows uh, for quickly working out problems. So setting the state of, the, of a contract is kind of, can get kind of hairy because you got to maybe have to deploy a bunch of contracts, got to go in and hit a bunch of functions, and you got to remember what you do. And each time you develop, it can be, you got to remember what the process is. So you can make a script that does that for you and then let the script run after you do a little bit of coding. Uh, and now we have this uh, button to push so you and you uh, click that, it will compile the contract and then run the script. And you connect the script and the contract with some NAT spec comments. There's an example in uh, the, the default one underscore storage to see how to connect the, uh, the NAT spec comment to, to connect the script and the uh, smart contract. You don't have to hit uh, compile and run all the time. You could just hit it when you want to. So just Compile, 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 and then when you need to, run it. Or I guess you probably could do it all the time, too. We've got a bunch of interoperability updates. You can compile for a hard hat project when you share the fol folder you're with Remixd to the hard hat project, to your hard hat project. And you can sync now. So if you want to uh, use Remix or Truffle or, I mean, if you want to use a hard hat Truffle or Foundry and uh, deploy with, and you can, then you can deploy with Remix. So once you share the folder, uh, and then you compile a uh, file in one of those other um, frameworks, then you can go to the, the, to the deploy and run, hit the, the refresh button. Like that one was compiled by Hardhat, and then we took the same file and compiled it in Remix, and it comes up with compiled by Remix. Yeah, then you can deploy and run it. Uh, we got uh, hard, uh, Foundry remappings when you share the uh, folder with a Foundry project. And here's uh, 27 seconds, so we can have some time for uh, questions uh, of some quick uh, grab bag of stuff. Um, oh, we got the advanced settings in the uh, Solidity compiler. 
So if you click the button over here, you can see an example JSON file that will uh, run all your uh, uh, compiler settings, so you don't have to do it by that. In deploy and run, there's a bunch of new um, providers, environments, and, um, and now for beginners, it's easier to see which one is the uh, injected web three, the injected provider, uh, and it will say the name of the injected provider. Uh, also now, like there in the environment section, the top link goes to chainlist.org, so you can find the, the spec of the chain you want to deploy to. And when you're looking at one of the L2s, it will uh, go to uh, a bridge to get the funds for that. The debugger got wider. There's a console.log, just like hard hat. Uh, and to get the, to the, to the um, documentation, you got to click that little carrot, it opens, and then you can click the uh, book to get to the documentation. And also, the little green check mark means that Remix uh, is the uh, owner of this code. We have a, a little bit updated Viper, so you can go to the Viper plugin, click that, and it'll download the uh, Viper Lang uh, repo. And there's a transaction recorder, which probably none of you have ever used, but you should check it out. It's in the middle of the deploy and run. And the browse and grab, if you, take, if you go to a verified contract and Etherscan, uh, you just change out the Etherscan for a Remix, and um, it'll uh, open it up in the editor. And now, questions. It's a question about, I, I see I know there's, there's already some integration between Remix and Swarm. I'm just wondering if you have any thoughts on the future of where that might go. I guess uh, we're in uh, open conversation with them. There's a, right now we're adding the postage stamp uh, so you could publish to Swarm. The next steps uh, I'm not entirely clear about, but you know, we're, we like to, that will be going on, continuing, not dropping. Hey, just a quick question. Um, are those features already available, or do we have to wait? No, those are all available. Awesome, thanks. Hi, it's a simple question. Uh, is a way to enable Bing Mode? Because uh, right now I'm using a, a browser plugin, but I hope that uh, you can support the, the Bing Mode online. Mobile? Bing Mode, the oh, Bing oh. Edi Editor. So we, we spent some time to improve the editor, like the Monaco editor. And then I think there's some requests that we had uh, last year. And uh, I mean, we are looking at that. It's not like uh, something we will prioritize for now, except if we would, if you would push, push for it. Uh, but yeah, we could do it. It could be Ray. <laughs> push for it, and we would do it for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. So thank you again, all three of you. you. Thank you. I give them a round of applause, people. Thank you so much.